So, am I going to give this quintessential quintet the stardom like I did in the Gujang story? Uh, about that. Welcome or welcome back to the Butter Bunch. My name is Jacob Butter, back with another Dragon Ball What If discussion. As I explained in my What If Piccolo Had a Son series, I have a particular favoritism towards the Ginyu Force. They're tied to one of my first experiences with Dragon Ball in general, at least in the manga. And much like a young Gohan, they clearly left some sort of impact on me. Not to mention being some of the most charming cats in the TFS series. As a result, I kind of let them off easy last time around. With everything that's gone on thus far, and how many wars we have alive and growing in power, well, let's just say they have their work cut out for them. But before we get on to the actual story, I have a question for all of you. So today we were discussing in our private Butterbunch group chat, with all four members of this channel, whether or not we should make a community Discord server. You know, because I enjoy interacting with your comments so much that I thought I'd give you guys another avenue that you would be able to use should you so desire. Interacting live and discussing things to do with Dragon Ball with me in situ. Not to mention, obviously, other ideas that we might have, like for example, BB's SMP series and uh, Emma and Aiden's whatever they decide to do. Maybe we'll talk about the Hatterful Boyfriend series that we stopped when we were first starting the channel and we never really got to continue properly. And of course, other suggestions that you lot might have, you know, so I can actually keep track of all of the ideas that people come up with rather than just going back to just Bardock and Chi Chi as the main examples, because there are, there have been a few more recent ones that they do seem to be a little bit on the more obscure side, I don't want to forget any of them. I will still read your comments, even if we do make the Discord server, and I will still respond to them on YouTube, because I enjoy doing that, and I acknowledge that not everyone has Discord, so it would be kind of foolish to do so. But yeah, let me know in the comments if you want server or no server, whichever one. Right now the votes are kind of uh, 3 to 1 because of uh, the engagement on the channel at the moment, but we'll see. Anyway. Let's get on to part 6 of What If Raditz and Nappa Turn Good, featuring the Ginyu Force. The five elite soldiers land and receive their mission just as before, checking the new scouts they brought with them for any possible survivors of the prior genocide. And what do you know? A power level just so happens to have spiked in the distance. That must be worth checking out. Yes, right at that moment, Gohan has had his potential unlocked. And when that happens, it's practically impossible to suppress your new energy reading. Guru warns the dragon team about the powers that are fast approaching. Piccolo senses them too, and urges the Elder Namekian to hurry up and release his potential as well. Guru hesitates though. There is negativity within you. Dark thoughts still cloud your judgement and motivate your actions. You are driven by a search for power and revenge. Piccolo protests this, saying that's not important right now. Those five new arrivals were a greater problem, and they all need to be as prepared as possible to face them. Nail wouldn't be enough protection on his own. Nail reluctantly agrees, accepting his fellow warrior clan members offer for help. Guru releases Piccolo's potential, and you know what that means. Time to talk power levels again. According to the comments on part 3 of this series, Gohan's power increased 8 times in the original series. However, I fact-checked that next to Daizenshu 7, and apparently he was originally at 14,000 during the Ginyu Force arc, and 1,500 before that, which is actually closer to 9.3 times. If that's not accurate, then let's put his increase down to the extra training and power that he has in the story, and say that he went from 3,954, which I'm going to run up to 4,000, to a new total, of 37,200. Piccolo, however, is a different story. This potential unlock, as Masako stated once, is an Omekian technique, so the effect on him would be even stronger. Let's go with 12 times to make it that much more significant. So Piccolo just went from 6,719, which I'll round down to 6,700, to a whopping 80,400 the equivalent of 67 Raditz. This wasn't just a power-up. Guru had made sure to enhance Piccolo's level-headedness too. He can now get a better grasp on his demons and eschew his father's desire for revenge. Any quarrel he may have with the Saiyans from now on will depend entirely on them. 
he's over it now. This new power spike from Piccolo made the Ginyus hesitate. Even the captain was cautious for a second, but he still ordered the men forward and landed triumphantly in front of Guru's uh, house, hut, his residence. Attention Namekians and Earthlings, we are the Ginyu Force, and we have been sent to retrieve any and all Dragon Balls in the name of Lord Frieza. So, hand them over. He gestures with his hand, but Yamcha isn't faced. He felt Piccolo's rise in power, he's not afraid of these guys. We don't have any. The Dragon Balls are hidden far away and you're never gonna see them. Ginyu gets very close to Yamcha the former bandit trying to stop himself from quivering. Is that so? He checks his scouter. 16,000? Child's play. Then my men and I will simply have to extract the information ourselves, if this is the only course available. Raccoon? The brute charges at Yamcha, who is barely able to respond. Raccoon tosses him around and slams him repeatedly into the ground, holding his ankle. You know, like the scene in Avengers where Hulk does that to Loki. That, basically. Gohan, of course, is becoming enraged pretty quickly. But the Ginyus were prepared for that. Goldo freezes him and the Namekian warriors just before they pounce in to help. Credit to Yamcha, his reputation is one of quite a cowardly disposition. But here, he actually resists and doesn't spill the beans. Is this a last-ditch effort to protect Bulma and get back in her good books? Hardly. He just knows it's the right thing to do. Good old Yamcha. Goldo is blustering a lot, explaining how his power works in that classic anime villain way we're oh so used to in Dragon Ball. With this ability, I can keep you all just where I need you. And you can watch your friend get beaten more and more until he either tells us what we want or... At that moment, he feels a key blast go right through him and he falls to the ground, lifeless. Consider that a freebie. Vegeta and Nappa had arrived at the scene a little while ago, too bruised and battered to do anything to help. But Vegeta wasn't about to sit around and let the Earthlings have all the glory. Using this distraction, Guru unlocks Dende's potential, granting him the powers of healing, and the young Namekian flies towards Yamcha immediately. Rakuma left him alone at this point, keen to get in on the action of taunting the prince and his right-hand man. Rakum should be impressed you two are still alive and kicking. But instead, he is too angry because of what you just did. Vegeta was obviously playing a retort in between all the blood that he was spitting. So Nappa decided to try and save both of their skins. Hey, little green man. A little help here? Dende looks back at Guru, not sure if he should. Guru nods from inside his house hut thing, and Dende flies over while Gohan, Piccolo, and Nail each rush one of the three remaining subordinates. The Namekians easily womp Jason Berta, but Gohan was struggling with Raccoon. It's not the curbstorm it was originally, but it was still an uphill battle for the five-year-old. Piccolo still lacks the fatherly instinct he had for Gohan in the original, so once again, Gohan gets an assist from another replacement. Ironically, it's Nappa this time. The Saiyan General has now attained a power of 12,500 from the Zenkai he just received which is nothing to Raccoon, but he did carry the element of surprise. For a while, Raccoon soon corrects this as well. Both Saiyans are once more beaten to a pulp, since the assist by Nappa was not coordinated in time. Vegeta then rushes Raccoon whilst the giant feels victorious, just like he did with Goldo and finishes the job. Meanwhile, Piccolo and Nail do the same to Jason Berta. Piccolo, yet again, uses his favourite alien dispatching technique, now even faster and more efficient. Ginyu is enraged. He's just watched all of his men bite the dust in quick succession. He powers up to his max of 120,000 and rushes the Namekian combo. This is another level for them. Exhausted and weakened as they were, through sheer war of attrition, Ginyu prevailed. He also pretends to think that he's victorious, having recognized Vegeta's pattern and the prince gets blasted when the captain spins around and almost vaporizes him. Almost at once, everyone is down. Ginyu isn't enjoying this win, instead preparing to wipe the floor with every last one of them. Really, past me? Really? You put that in the script?
Fine, fine. I guess I guess I'm bound to say that I have to say the line. That is until Raditz shows up, and Goku as well. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I don't know why it does. It, it was right there. It was right there. For the second time now, these two showed up just when everyone else was done. At least they're all in the same dimension this time. Only just. Raditz, who recognized Captain Ginyu, spoke first. What do we have here? I'm surprised to see you, Captain. Frieza must be getting desperate to have sent your team. Speaking of whom, where are... Oh. He notices the corpses of all the other Ginyus littered about. The captain is not in the mood for banter. He may have suffered the first casualties, but he assures Raditz that he shall be next in the pile. Um, bro? So, this guy... Do we need to worry about him? Oh, him? <laughs> not at all. He powers up to Kai again. 400,000. Goku does the same. 360,000. Ginyu has no chance. If he wants to stay alive, he's going to have to resort to his secret technique. And that is where I conclude things for the time being. Why am I cutting things so short here? Well, that's because you guys have all been so helpful and I've had so many suggestions in the comments that I am going to use your suggestion for where the story goes from here. I have a poll for you. Who does Ginyu swap bodies with? in the next part. Will it be Goku like in the original? Or do we continue to spice things up and choose Raditz here? Since YouTube, much to my distaste, has decided to remove the option to make poll cards entirely, I'm instead going to be posting two comments below. One saying Goku and one saying Raditz. Whichever one gets the most upvotes will be the one that Ginyu swaps with in part seven. Feel free to justify your opinions or reply like you normally do, but remember to make your vote count as well. And obviously, talk about the Discord server. So yeah, lots of comments, but just as well that I'm doing this in the most popular series we have. And of course, like I always say, let me know your thoughts on of liking or disliking, and also, again, leaving comments. I'm sorry, I'm saying comments a lot on where the discussion could go beyond the poll. I'll see you all soon enough in another Butter Bunch video. Toodle pip.